But first, an Israeli air offensive against Hamas in Gaza has entered its second day. So far, some 280 Palestinians have been killed and 600 wounded in the largest Gaza operation since 1967. This morning, Israel is taking steps that could lead to a ground invasion, amassing tanks on the Gaza border and calling up army reservists. In response, Hamas has promised a new wave of suicide bombing attacks against Israel. A short while ago, after an emergency cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, I spoke with Israel's foreign minister, Tzipi Livni, and asked her how long the offensive would last. Until we can, um, I, I, until we can change realities on the ground, the situation is uh, um, a situation in which Israeli citizens are targeted from Gaza Strip, a place that we left a few years ago in order to create a new horizon for peace. But uh, we got uh, Hamas in return. A lot of people are, are watching what's playing out, this air assault, and wondering why now? Oh, why right now? Because after uh, Israel decided to leave Gaza Strip a few years ago and we got Hamas in return, about a half a year ago, uh, according to the Egyptian initiative, we decided to enter a kind of a truce and uh, not to attack Gaza Strip. Uh, Hamas violated on a daily basis this truce. Uh, they targeted Israel uh, and we didn't answer. But unfortunately, Hamas misunderstood uh, the fact that uh, Israel didn't retaliate. And only last week, uh, we had in a day 80 rockets, missiles, mortars on Israeli civilians. More than that, they used uh, the period of uh, truce in order to rearm themselves. They smuggled weapon. They built a small army in uh, Gaza Strip. So the situation was unbearable. What is Israel's goal right now? Is it to reestablish the ceasefire or is it to invade Gaza and remove Hamas from power? Uh, our goal uh, is not to uh, reoccupy Gaza Strip. We left Gaza Strip. We took our forces out. We dismantled all the settlements. But uh, since Gaza Strip is being controlled by the extremists, and since Gaza Strip is being controlled by Hamas, and since uh, Hamas is using Gaza Strip in order to target us, we need uh, to, t to give an answer to this. Foreign Minister, aren't you making the case for pushing Hamas from power? Uh, the ceasefire, according to Israel, simply hasn't worked. It hasn't stopped the bombing of Shterot and, and Israel in the southern areas. So only the replacement of Hamas by Fatah, by more moderate leaders, appears to be the only answer. The goal is to give an answer to our citizens, to give them the possibility to live in peace like any other citizen in the world, and Hamas need to understand it. Is it acceptable to Israel for Hamas to remain in power in Gaza? It is acceptable only in time, only if and when Hamas accepts the requirements of the international community. Right now, Hamas didn't accept, is not willing to accept the requirements of the international community, is not willing to accept the right of Israel to exist. He uh, uh, violates uh, any kind of understandings and he's using terror against Israeli civilians. So he cannot be legitimate and acceptable right now. Let me ask you, I know you were in Egypt this past week. You met with Hosni Mubarak. What did yes. you hear in the course of those meetings? The foreign minister of Egypt has criticized Hamas. And what is your message to the Arab world this morning? You know that Hamas doesn't serve the interests of the Palestinians or the moderate Arab world. You know that Hamas doesn't uh, represent uh, the national aspiration of the Palestinians. You know that Hamas represents this kind of ideology of hatred that they want to spread in the region. You know that Hamas stands on the, uh, uh, on the way of the Palestinians to create their own states. So put your, in, in a way, put your mouth, put, put, your, put your money where, where, where your mouth is. I mean, say the right things right now. The Bush administration has been supportive of the campaign so far in Gaza, but has warned Israel about avoiding civilian casualties. What kinds of consultations have you had with Secretary of State Rice? Well, uh, of course, uh, we are in a very close uh, uh, connection. I am uh, in a very close uh, connection with Secretary Rice, and we had some talks uh, only uh, last night. Uh, the idea, and this is uh, according also to our values, we are targeting Hamas. We are not looking for civilians to kill more than that. During this military operation, we are trying to avoid any kind of civil casualty. Israel called 
uh, the population of Gaza uh, to leave places in which they know that Hamas has uh, its own headquarters, since Hamas is using the civil population and is acting and targeting, targeting Israel from uh, civil population centers. We call the civilians uh, to leave these places. We are trying to make all the efforts in order to target uh, only uh, terrorists uh, and Hamas uh, headquarters and places. But unfortunately, in a war, like any war, sometimes uh, also a civilian pays the price. But if the goal is to change realities on the ground, to change the behavior of Hamas, how much international condemnation yes. is Israel prepared to accept? And at what level of civilian casualties? You know, this is uh, the one uh, who need to be condemned by the international community is Hamas. This is a, a designated a terrorist organization. Uh, he is not willing even to give an answer to the international calls to recognize the right of Israel to exist. He uses terror. Israel is a state that implements its right to defend itself and its citizens. So I expect the international community to work accordingly since the moment in which Hamas sees that the international community condemn is, condemns Israel and not Hamas, these are, this is the moment in which they become stronger and holding and trying uh, to avoid any kind of changes until the international community forces Israel to stop. So I expect the international community, including the entire Arab world, to send a clear message to Hamas it's your fault, it's your responsibility, uh, you are the one who is being condemned, you are not going to get legitimacy from the international community this way the, or the other. The responsibility for the life of civilians in Gaza Strip is in your hands and then we have some chance, chances to see a change in their, uh, in, not only in their position but in their behavior. Foreign Minister Tsipi Livni, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And turning back home, we are now joined from Chicago by senior advisor to President-elect Obama, David Axelrod. Welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks, David. Good to be here. What is the President-elect's position on this offensive against Gaza by Israel? Well, obviously, it's a very serious situation. He spent some time on the phone with Secretary uh, Rice yesterday, uh, and he is monitoring the situation. But we've said repeatedly through this transition period that we, uh, there's only one president at a time, and President Bush speaks for the United States of America until January 20th, and we're going to honor that uh, uh, moving forward. But in the course of the campaign, the now president-elect visited Sterot, in he fact, did. in southern Israel, and he said that Israel had a right to defend itself against rocket attacks from he Hamas. Did. Does he believe it's appropriate for Israel, if it takes this decision, to push Hamas from power? He did, as you said, uh, visit Sterot in uh, July, and he said then that he thought that when uh, bombs are rain, raining down on your citizens, it is, it's obviously unacceptable and uh, there uh, is a, 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 an urge to act. And so, uh, but again, I don't want to go beyond that because uh, we only have one government and one president at a time and uh, he's going to continue to consult with Secretary Rice and the president and the administration on this and monitor these events and he'll be prepared to um, take over on the 20th. And, uh, and, and discharge his responsibilities then.